that just gave birth with all the raw pain down there and the stitches down there you will not go and tell her to sit on on hot steam add salt add maggi add curry sit on hot steam and, and, and cook the place up why hello guys welcome back to my channel my name is adeze and i'm a youtuber based in port harcourt nigeria i'm a mom i have two lovely daughters cora and ava and yeah if you're new to this channel you're welcome and if you're a returning subscriber thank you so much for coming back please go around the comment section and look for our new members and welcome them to our channel <laughs> Anyway, so you guys, today this video is a collaboration with Diary of an Abuja Mom. She's a mommy YouTuber also based in Abuja. She has two lovely kids, Gina and Ife. And in my mind, Gina and Cora are actually very good friends, okay? So you guys should go and check out her own version of this video. I'm sure you're going to find it fun and enlightening and interesting, okay? So I'm going to leave her link in the description box and on the screen. Just go and check out her channel after you've been watching this video, okay? Yeah, so you guys, in today's video, I'm going to be discussing African or Nigerian traditional childcare uh, methods and procedures and you know child care activities that I as a person I refuse to practice and my children turned out pretty good okay my children turned out well they are healthy they are doing so good okay so we'll talk about them in this video and you know to be honest the reason why I want to make this video is that I belong to a group on Facebook called Ask the pediatricians okay so it's a facebook group that was created by a group of pediatricians so you know you can ask them questions and they answer if they've already answered the questions they'll direct you to you know where they answer the questions or they direct you to your doctor okay these are certified doctors pediatricians but on that group you will still see moms that will come and be arguing with them like my own method, method is better i'm like what are you saying and most of these moms that come to argue the kind of things they're talking about are all these traditional methods that we know that are either harmful or are just not necessary okay so you just anytime i'm scrolling through that uh, page and i'm seeing some questions or some comments because some women they actually come there and tell other moms don't listen to the doctor so me i did this one my grandma did this one my great grandma did this one and nothing happened eh -eh. the fact that nothing happened or the fact that there's nothing documented as the result of the things you did doesn't mean that it doesn't have any consequences okay anyway i'm going to be going into all that in this video so if you'd like to know the traditional african nigerian practices that i refuse to do then keep on watching anyway before i even go into that let me just put a disclaimer okay I personally am sort of a rebel, okay? I really don't do things because everybody is doing it. No. In fact, when everybody is doing something, I now start questioning why, I, why, why is everybody doing this? Even if I was trying to do it before, because it's now hyped, I will now start looking at it with, with, with another <laughs> lens, with extra lens, okay? So some of the things I want to talk about, I really don't do them, but at the same time, I really don't judge people who do them because, I mean, live and let live, okay? But there are some things I'm going to mention. When I mention them, I'll tell you, I am judging you and your relationship with that think it is okay for you to do such things okay so some things say yes to me they are outrightly wrong while some things is like eh, whatever just do what you want okay okay so number one for me is bathing of kids the way they give newborn babies a bath in nigeria you guys that's a thing that you guys think is cute and all that i don't find it cute i find it very disturbing i see it as torture because it is so unnecessary why are you twisting the baby's hand this way bending the baby's leg that way i didn't do it for my kids and thankfully my mom is very open-minded when i just told her that we're not going to be doing this kind of bath she even agreed in fact i'm sure she was even relieved not to have to do that kind of bath for my children because to be honest it's so unnecessary why are you torturing this child you know me i find it i see it as torture what exactly are you massaging in the child's body is it that the child went to farm or a child was doing race or what that you now have to you know massage the body so that the body will not pain them from the tedious work they have been doing since for the past nine months or what like i really don't get it i really don't get the use some people say it makes the kids stronger see i didn't do it for my two kids and my kids are very very strong okay i didn't do it for my two kids and it turned out okay so that bathing of children that they twist hand to me is not necessarily okay bath your child gently their babies they are still fragile they are still very they are still young they're not doing anything what are they doing what are you massaging in their body me the way i bath my kids is i even use a standing bath for my kids i put them in a standing bath 
I use normal soap. That, that's another thing I don't do. I don't use all those special. Some people will say bath with palm oil, uh, bath with this sponge. If you don't use that sponge, maybe we'll have body odor. Who told you that kind of? I it doesn't even make sense to me. Uh, some people use very strong um, sponge for babies. That if you don't do it, baby will have body odor. Did the baby go to, to, to farm? I don't understand it, okay? So, me, I just put my child in a standing bath. I use that foam uh, sponge. You know that foam sponge that is very, very, very soft? I just use it and bath my baby gently. Like, sometimes if I bath my baby, my baby will be sleeping. Bath my baby gently. If they are awake, I play with them. I take the sponge, soak up some water, and just squeeze it all over their body. The baby will just be so relaxed. I don't get that part that you'll be twisting baby's hand, bending the hand, doing this one. Well, it's not fair now, eh? Nigeria is already hard. The world's already hard as it is. Don't make it don't make it worse for your child. Okay, why are you suffering your child from that age? The world's already stressful as it is, eh? It's already very, very stressful. So allow them, in fact, being born into Nigeria another is another <laughs> stress on its own. It's another stress on its own. So don't make it worse for your child by giving them all those kind of stressful torture. I, mean, I call it torture anyway because to me it doesn't make sense. And I don't see any benefit for it. My children are strong, they don't have any. Some people will say, Oh, if you you have to be throwing the child up so that the child will not be scared. I didn't do it for my children. Granted, Cora is kind of <laughs> Cora gets scared easily, but I didn't do it for Eva and Eva does not flinch like Eva is a strong Eva is very very strong she doesn't flinch so to me all those things are just personality differences okay whether a child gets scared or doesn't get scared personality differences it's not about whether you scare the child or not okay don't go and give your child high BP from from babyhood <laughs> as for massage what I used to do for my children is after I finished bathing my baby I put my baby on the changing mat still standing I put my baby on the changing mat and then I start to massage their body you know softly with olive oil just I just wear them diapers so they don't wear on their body but I put you know olive oil on them massage them very well if the weather is very cold I cover some part of their body with towel and then I just massage the part that's exposed when I'm done I dress them up they slip off or they start playing happily okay so to me all those things that people do they'll say they're trying to make the child stronger they're trying to prevent the child from breaking leg in the future it's a lie okay it doesn't work okay the second one too is also kind of related to the first one is about bathing the baby twice I've noticed that a lot of homes they usually bath their baby twice in the morning uh, when the child wakes up and then at night before the child goes to bed see it is not necessary okay it is better it is more beneficial in fact don't take my word for it go and do your research it is more beneficial to, to give your child a bath once a day okay if you're in colder regions it's better for you to give your bath your child a bath once in two days or once in three days yes yes but me i don't have the heart to do once in two days or three days so even if the weather is cold i give my child a bath once a day at night even when my children were going to crutch i bath them only at night in the morning they go to crutch when they come back i wash all the crutch away from their body and bath them only at night okay and my children have always had very good skin okay see go and do your research sometimes over bathing actually kills most of the flora is it flora they call it yes i think the good bacteria on the child's body you guys it's been long i researched all these things okay the good bacteria on the child's body excessive bathing can kill all those um, good bacteria on their skin and they start having skin issues and then you now start doing more bathing because the child has skin issues you now bath the child more rub this rub that it is not necessary okay once a day is totally fine except for in my own case if in the morning my child has one massive blowout that stains everywhere i have, I have to you know wash them it's even said now that using antibacterial uh, disinfectants is, is bad okay so some people will put disinfectants they will still use soap and they will still bath the baby twice a day it is too much eh? take a music give yourself peace just do it once a day and rest okay <laughs> all right okay you guys know my story i battled infertility for four good years before i had cora okay trust me those four good years i became a pregnancy and childcare expert like i was online i was doing my research i was reading resources i was reading materials i was reading write-up posts uh, videos anything about childcare and pregnancy so that is why so most of the things i'm telling you guys i have read about them extensively so i know what i'm talking about so if you think that i am wrong fine okay but go and do your research at least so i can boldly come on the internet and say what i want to say because i am very very sure of some of the things that i'm saying okay after i had the moment i got pregnant with cora till i gave birth to cora the only thing i was doing was research i wasn't even walking then i was always on my bed i'll eat sleep research eat sleep research okay so yeah i'm just saying all this so that before you come to my conversation and come and argue just know that i know what i'm saying okay it's going to be very hard for you to change my mind from this thing that i'm saying okay so the next one is the use of baby powder you guys i really don't get it 
why we need baby powder for children it is not necessary it doesn't do anything for them if your child is hot expose your child a little more so that the child will, child temperature will come down do not say oh my child is hot but you will still wear the child sweater and then pour powder on the child's face and on the child's neck and on the child's bum bum you're just making things worse you're, you're making their skin issues worse worse because you're using that powder to clog their pores okay so it is not necessary for you to use baby powder for your children either as diaper whatever is a diaper rash whatever it is not necessary okay for diaper rash look for diaper rash creams things like pseudo cream like um there's this angel baby diaper rash cream that i use i really liked it um asda they have different brands that are specific they will have chico specifically made creams that are used for diaper creams okay yes yeah, some of those things are expensive so what can you do you can use good old shea butter yes i use shea butter a lot for my children's bum bum and they had very fresh bum bum okay <laughs> They had very fresh bomb bomb, okay? So you can use good old shea butter or good old petroleum jelly, okay? Although I don't really like petroleum jelly, that's vaccine. I don't really like it to be honest. So I don't use it for my kids. I think I used it when Cora was small, but after Cora, I didn't use it forever. I used shea butter all through. And she never, when I say never, she never had diaper rash, okay? The time she had diaper rash was even recently, and that was because she was reacting to the um, diapers. It wasn't like it was heat or anything. Okay? And if you even can do further research, you'll see that talk, talk, that's ingredients in powder i think it's the chalky ingredient in powder i don't i'm not sure but stark itself um has been linked to some kind of cancer yes go and do your research now i'm not i'm not really going deep into that because i mean what doesn't ca cause cancer these days even the asf is causing cancer these days so that's i'm not going so much into that research but the research is there go and read it okay let's even scare you for that from using powder stop using powder it's not necessary okay thank you <laughs> So the next one that I did not do, and this one I was so happy that I did not do it, is, the, is buying baby walker. You guys, everybody and their grandma swore to me that baby walker will make my children walk faster. Now, in Cora's case, Cora did not walk until she was 14 months. Ah, everybody was on my neck. The reason why she's not walking is because she you did not use walker for her. If you use walker, she will just walk because walker makes it. <laughs> you guys, there is no scientific evidence that walker can help a baby walk there is none whatsoever as in whatsoever there is no proof that using a baby walker can make a baby walk okay that's number one number two baby walkers are actually dangerous if you're not careful because number one it gives an immobile and otherwise immobile um toddler or child it gives them the mobility to go and reach things that are dangerous okay so they can go to the stove they can go to hot water they can go to hot tea they can go to hot food and go and drag it down okay so this is a child that if you didn't give the child worker the child might have just been at one corner but no because you give the child worker the child that cannot have access to those dangerous things and also to dangerous places so if in your house you have stairs or you have um you know step downs and stuff like that please do not buy a worker for your child it can be very very dangerous yes people have been using worker for the past 200 years but i'm just telling you now that it does not have there's no proof that it is necessary it doesn't do anything for the child if you're just doing it because you need an activity for the child to do then go and buy a jumper room instead okay i'm going to leave a picture on the screen this is what a jumper room looks like that's what i bought for my two kids and they loved it it, it has way more activities they will bounce so it even helps to strengthen their legs if it is you know leg strength you're looking for they have activities to do it they can bounce in it so their legs are still being strengthened and you know they have way more activities in it is way 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 more fun than a worker okay and now some workers are actually um advanced and they have more activities but a jumper rule is a very good way to keep your child in a place so you are sure that if I put my child there, my child is still there, you can sit down here and just watch your child play, okay, rather than when the child is in the walker and you are running up and, down the up and down chasing the child, okay. So yeah, I didn't use a walker for Ava either, and Ava walked before Cora did, that is according to their ages, Ava walked earlier than Cora did, okay, so, and I had a friend who had a walker and her child did not walk till 15 months, so yeah, like, there's no argument there whether I walk, a walker does not walk, it's like, there's no, in fact, doctors even, um advice against using a worker okay okay so the next one this one is not really a childcare practice but it's an omugwa practice okay and that is pressing of tummy with hot water <sighs> you guys everybody told my mom then uh -uh, 
She's not pressing her tummy. Try and press her tummy. Let her can use hot water. You take hot water and towel and press the tummy. Press the tummy. All the blood just be dropping. If you press the tummy, the tummy will just go in so that she will not have big tummy. You guys, I did not tie anything on my tummy i do not press any hot water i do not drink any this i do not sit on any hot water i do not do jack and i recovered perfectly in fact my tummy was even flatter then than it is now that i that, that, that because i added more weight after i had my kids like I'm, i added more weight like this last year when my child was already one year plus okay that won't make my tummy even as big as it is now but before i um, I started gaining weight. My tummy was flat, flat. Like it was, yes, of course, it was obvious that I already had a baby, but it wasn't like I had big tummy and I didn't press nothing. Okay, so that pressing that people are doing to me it is still touch. I don't know, Nigerians, people like suffering. That's just the truth of the matter. But you will never admit it. You people like suffering. Like the world is not complicated enough for you. We need to complicate it more by pressing and, and using hot water and using this and blowing and that and sitting on, you know. So people will tell you, someone that a woman that just gave birth with all the raw pain down there and the stitches down there you're not gonna tell her to sit on on hot steam add salt add maggie add curry sit on hot steam and, and, and cook the place up why it is so not necessary i've heard of women who had to land back in the hospital for them to be stitched back up because the, the heat melted the stitches like what what's come on what is the point of all these things you want the place to, it will still go back to normal the place will still go back to normal okay it is it was created to expand and retract it will still go back to normal with time Okay, so this next one is, you know that soft part of a baby's skull? The one they call posterior front front tunnel or something, posterior front tunnel. That part on the baby's skull that is usually um, soft and looks like you can see the child's pulse from there. Yes, that part, okay? I don't understand why people feel the need to put things in that place. For me, one of the biggest advantages of seeing that thing is that when your child is dehydrated, you can know from that, you know, from that spot that your child is, is dehydrated, okay? Aside that, that is all you do not need to do anything to that place if the weather is cold then cover your child up put, put a cap for your child okay and in nigeria all this cover cover and that's i did not do i didn't put that silver bed thing for my child i don't know if it's ever silver, silver bed they call it or something but i think i've heard it called being called silver bed i know when i catch some people's babies i used to smell it on the child and i don't and i like, put all this okay so that thing i never did it see you see all this cover cover that when a child they'll say hey, hey, hey the child is not the child's temperature they will not cover they will, i did not cover cover initially for current time because i was new to the whole thing and everybody kept insisting cover cover i was covering her so at some point i saw rashes on coral but i was like for there to be rashes it means that this child is hot okay rashes don't come for the sake of you know rashes it is caused by something so you see some children will have rashes the rashes will swell and turn to blisters and start bringing out pus and then instead of you to expose the child so all those things can drop and the child's skin will heal no they'll keep the child covered and the can start looking for a bone and this and that to to use and, and uh, treat the child you guys are making things more complicated than they should be okay nigeria generally is a hot climate okay generally nigeria is hot okay so wear your child a onesie or wear your child even if it's long like for me because we sleep with ac i usually wear my children long sleeve um overalls for them to sleep with i don't even wear them caps because they my children had hair but if your child does not have hair you can wear your child a cap, a cap for night and that is it okay if the weather is now extremely cold you cannot use a blanket me i, I just use receiving blanket that very light receiving blanket it's only when the ac is so cold i can now put the normal baby blankets on them but in many people's houses the weather is hot you still cover your baby with this cover and still put receiving blanket on top and still put heavy blanket on top why are you torturing your children <laughs> like you guys i'm tired like why are we torturing children that's why many people are angry because from birth they have been conditioning you to be to suffer so you are just everybody is just angry everybody is hot tempered because you are covered up from child you are very hot you do not need to overcover your child your child will be fine just make sure that you don't overexpose your child either okay so me during the day let me tell what my children wear during the day in nigeria okay because we don't use ac everywhere in our house like if my children are in the parlor they wear their ones that is the one that is just pants and short sleeve that's what my children wear to stay at home even from birth yes from birth i must wear them socks and that onesie if i feel that the weather is too is you know it's not that it's not that hot i might wear them socks and wear them the onesie other than that no socks no shoe no nothing they just wear their onesie and they will be fine my children did not have cold until recently it's when they grew older they started getting cold and for current when she started going to crutch when she was much older one year plus and she was going to crutch that's when she started having cold and all those things but what but when she was younger she didn't have any symptom of cold okay so at the end of the day 
you will see that we are the ones causing some of these issues for ourselves and at the end of the day we are not looking for more things to use and cure these things that we cause by ourselves and we are not complicating issues the more okay okay so the next one is i did not cut my children's hair at one year i did not cut their hair at one year okay to me it's not necessary for boys i understand the one for boys because when you cut their hair at one year they now look like toddlers they officially look like toddlers they look very cute and all that but for girls it is not necessary except they're just doing it now so i don't i don't judge anybody for doing it okay it, it, sometimes maybe your baby has bald spot at the back and you just want the hair to grow back evenly and all that is fine but for me for cora i didn't start taking care of cora's hair from when she was born so at some point she had balls put at the back but i did not cut her hair what i did was i started putting satin sheets where she sleeps i started moisturizing her hair more i started washing her hair only once a week you know before i knew what was happening her hair grew then i started trimming off most of her baby hair i was trimming off her ends so right now my kids don't have any baby hair left on their heads but they were never bored they never carry going my up and down <laughs> as for eva from when she was born i was taking care of her hair and right now her hair is very long and full and very fine so to me not necessary for you to cut your baby some people say if you don't cut it new hair will not grow this one your baby's hair will still grow texture hair texture still changes whether or not you cut the hair the texture will still change so the next one i did not do was giving my children water yes i did not give my children water to drink okay it is not necessary breast milk contains enough hydration for your child breast milk contains enough water for your child okay correctly mixed formula contains enough water for your child you do not need to give your child extra water my children do not take water the only time my children were giving water was in the hospital when my breast milk cannot start flowing that was when Cora alone was giving water one nurse gave her water the nurse gave her formula and gave her water that i did not give them water till they started eating solids okay they do not need water breast milk and formula contain enough water some people say oh when the child has hiccups give the child water okay see first of all water does not cure hiccups yes what cures hiccups is the act of drinking and that's because in fact what cures hiccups is holding your breath okay but the act of drinking forces a child to hold their breath because you cannot tell a child hold your breath so the hiccup will stop no you give the child breast milk or formula so the act of drinking forces them to hold their breath because they cannot they cannot breathe while drinking okay so stick with me they can't breathe while drinking so they are forced to hold their breath for a little while and then it sometimes stops the hiccups sometimes it doesn't stop unless it stops on its own but yeah giving your child water does not stop hiccups so don't say no give the child water the child's having hiccups it does not stop hiccups okay it is holding your breath that stops hiccups and also another thing i did not do was carry when a, when a child has hiccups some people go and carry white material white thread and put on their child's head and say that it stops hiccups i beg from where to where now as as how from where to where <laughs> you guys i'm even weak i'm even tired of doing this video sir, because i'm like why why are we doing all these things see let me even tell you my own um theory okay let me tell you my own theory why i feel that white um cloth thing is a thing okay let me tell you why now I've said it that holding your breath um, stops hiccups, okay? Yes, sometimes it stops hiccups, it's not all the time. Holding your breath stops hiccups. Now, being startled, being shocked, okay? Being startled also cures hiccups because when you are startled, you hold your breath, okay? When something suddenly scares you, you hold your breath, so it cures the hiccups, right? Good. Now, I feel that when a child is having hiccups, I know they are lost in the you know rhythm of the hiccups or they're not paying attention or they're just feeling sleepy the act of you putting something on their hair actually startles them a bit that's my theory i don't even believe it though, but that's just, i don't think it's true but that's just my theory so maybe that act of putting something on their head startles them a bit and the hiccup might stop but i've not seen anybody that puts it and the hiccup stops i've not even seen so, so so that thing to me is just a myth that doesn't even make sense and it even sounds kind of diabolical to me okay but that's just me okay that's just my opinion even though i'm lucky judging you okay uh, let me just say i'm not judging you okay uh, you go ahead continue putting white clothes very soon you put white powder put a, a tribal mark on your child <laughs> Very soon you will tie the child wrapper, give the child the horse whip, and put the white spot on the child's hair so that the child will, will, will finish the, the incantation. <laughs> 
that's just it for this video you guys have talked a lot i hope this video was not, was not too long for you guys but that's it so remember to go over to diary Barapuja mom's channel so that you can check out her own version of this video so yeah i finished discussing about love love marriage this you know valentine has passed so that one has passed this one is my children's birthday season so if there's any other topic you want to discuss about concerning child care concerning childbearing concerning you know raising a child and all that or postpartum care leave a quest leave your questions in the comment section and i might answer them in another video or i answer you directly in the comment section okay i want to talk more about child care in the next few videos that i'm going to be doing okay so anyway you guys thank you so so much for watching if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel please and also uh, turn on the notification bell so i'm notified anytime i post a new video and like this video and also share share my videos <laughs> okay if you have any new mom or any intending mom or any pregnant you know mother new mom anybody that wants to give birth and needs you know more information send this video to them and i'm sure they are going to benefit from it okay i'll see you all in my next video bye Mwah.